Hello, welcome back to Dr. Darnisa's House of Religion, Magic, and Conjure. Glad to have you back. Wow, thanks so much for all of uh, the views, the watches, the shares, and everything. We're really growing over here, and I so appreciate it. Um, so, uh, if you haven't subscribed, do hit the notification bell also so that you'll know when I'm back on. Uh, so today I wanted to talk about something a little bit unusual, I think, because uh, I'm going to talk about Catholicism a little bit. And it's interesting because people have um, such such strong feelings about Catholicism, usually very anti-Catholic. Um, and, well, two things. One, I wanted to share about um, the first African-American cardinal in Catholic history. Just to give him a shout out. Look, we talk, I talk here on this channel about black religion, right? Religion, magic, and conjure. And so this is news, y'all. This is big news, in fact. Um, the Archbishop Wilton Gregory has become the first African-American cardinal in Catholic history. And I'm just looking over here at the, at the report on, uh, on my computer. Um, just because I wanted to get some, make sure I was getting some details right. But he's been an Archbishop, Wilton Gregory, 72 years old, and he becomes the first African-American Cardinal in Catholic history. And so if you're not Catholic, you might say, you know, what does that really mean? But it's the College of Cardinals in Rome who helped to elect a Pope, right? A Pope holds that position uh, for a lifetime. And then when there's a new Pope to be chosen, it's the cardinals who, you know, go into seclusion, essentially, and they vote on who is to be the next pope. And then they signal that to the world by, you know, um, uh, signaling via smoke signals, literally. And so this black man has been elevated to that realm, to, to, the, card, to the College of Cardinals. It's a very big deal. It's a very big deal. He's, you know, he's going to go down in history for this. And uh, again, it, it doesn't matter if you're Catholic or not, but to know this as a piece of history is really important, and which is why I'm talking about it. Um, what I also want to say is uh, some things about Catholicism, because I get so much anti, you know, like, oh, the Catholics changed the Bible. The Catholics have been lying to people. The Catholics is, you know, <laughs> It's, I hardly know where to start with this, right? Let me just start with this. The Catholic Church was the first institutional Christian church, right? The Jesus people were Jewish people. And when Jesus died, there were movements that tried to continue Jesus's message. And really, those, those movements failed, except for Paul. So if you read the New Testament, you have all these books from Paul. It's really Paul's version of the story we have that we call Christianity. And Paul was himself a Jew. But what he was able to do was to take this religion this, of these very small group of people, right? The Jews were already a small group of people. But then the people who were following Jesus... Yeshua was even smaller. And then the people who were left after the death, the really murder and execution of Jesus, let's call it what it is, what it was, really small and would have died out. It just frankly would have died out. We wouldn't have had anything. We, nobody would have remembered Yeshua of Nazareth. But because of Paul, he was able to take the message to the Gentiles. And ultimately, Constantine, the emperor of Rome, Decide, convert it to Christianity. And that's how it became a worldwide religion because the emperor of Rome spread the religion. Um, and so that religion, that form of Christianity is Catholicism. Catholic really just means universal. So, and, and there was no Bible. So there was no Bible to take anything out of. But yes, you've probably heard of the Council of Nicaea and the Council of Chalcedon where, you know, these groups of people got together to decide various things, but one of which uh, about the nature of Jesus and another one about the, you know, how to, which books are going to be included in this thing called the Bible. 
So it wasn't a matter of what books are we going to take out, and therefore the Catholic Church came in at some point in the Middle Ages and took books out. It is a matter of what was going to go in to this thing that we're developing called the Bible. And of course, the letter, letters were chosen, uh, writings were chosen according to a singular vision that, that they were trying to create to tell the story about Yeshua and about God and what it meant to be a people of God. Of course, they were trying to get a singular message because there were so many fragmented communities who had different letters and things that Constantine said, well, we've got to put together and have one story. Story, And we know there's a lot of different letters because in the New Testament, you've got all these letters, right? That's what those are. The Philippians, the Hebrews, the Galatians, the Colossians. Paul was literally writing letters. And so people had all these different writings. Um, and so anyway, that's the origin uh, of the institutional church. And yes, it is a hierarchy. And yes, it became corrupt, as institutions do. And so I'm not trying to rescue Catholicism from any of its uh, ills or corruptions because they are plenty. And, you know, I'm not here to be a, a, a Catholic apologist, as, as they say, meaning a defender of the faith. That's not my job here or what I desire to do at all. But just to, just to have knowledge and information because people continue to spread misinformation about Catholics and in particular, and no, they don't worship Mary, and no, they don't worship statues. Um, no, they don't even worship saints. Think about what people say about those of us who practice African traditional spiritualities, and they say we worship our ancestors, and they say we worship, you know, crystals and things. I got a lot, I'm wearing a lot of my crystals today. Um, they say we worship these things. We don't, and we know we don't worship these things. Likewise, Catholics don't worship saints and idols and, you know, statues and things. Those are rituals. Like we have our rituals. I'm on here giving you rituals sometimes. Every spirituality has its rituals. And so Catholics have theirs too. And yes, because they became a religion of empire, they became corrupt in many ways and colonizers and enslavers, just like throughout human history. But what I will say um, is in the United States, or no, in the New World, meaning the United States, the Caribbean, South America, Central America, one of the ways in which African people were able to save our African religions was because Catholicism is practiced the way it is. And what do I mean by that? Because Catholicism is celebrated with its statues and saints um, and prayer be uh, rosary beads and its uh, adoration or uh, veneration of Mary, that meant that those, those African people who were coming with their African identities and African culture and Orisha and, and Loa, from their own Yoruba tradition or, or Vodun tradition, they were able to blend their African religions in with Catholicism and therefore maintain their African traditions. If we look at people in Haiti, those were French Catholics who brought those African people to Haiti and they were able to maintain and they, they created or, or recreated, reshaped Vodun in the New World so that we still have Vodun. If we look at Cuba, it was Spanish Catholics who brought those African people and slavery. And because of Catholicism, the way it's practiced, those African people were able to retain their African traditions in this thing called Santeria or Lukumi. In Brazil, the, the Portuguese, the Catholic Portuguese brought African people and they were able to reshape and, and have, and call, we call it, well, it's a number of different Afro-Brazilians, but Candomblé in particular, Umbanda. And so around the New World, Catholicism served a certain purpose for enslaved people. That had been 
all better if they had left us alone to start with, right? We didn't need colonizers. We didn't need enslavement. But given the context that we were kidnapped and enslaved, Catholicism and the way that it's practiced meant that African people said, ah, I know that saint. That saint is like my Orisha. So when the priest is looking, when the slave owner is looking, I say I'm Catholic. And when they're not looking, I serve the Loa. I serve my Orisha. I remember that I'm an African person. Right. So I just wanted to come on with that and make a couple of just, you know, Catholic connections for us. But frankly, I'm happy that Archbishop Wilton Gregory has been um, appointed to be a cardinal. It's a historic moment. It's an important moment. Um, and there will be more. There, there will definitely be more. This is a world where we uh, we see things changing right before our eyes. We see you know, colonialism falling in many ways, imploding upon itself. We see the current Pope, Pope Francis, who, you know, has spoken out about Black Lives Matter, right? He's been, you know, somewhat supportive of Black Lives Matter. He's called out racism as a sin. And, you know, while it doesn't fix everything, it's better to have that support than not have it. This Pope even criticized the American president, number 45. So I will leave it there and please leave some comments. If you've made it this far in the video, I appreciate you. Um, I'm, I, I'm sure I'm going to get some comments from, uh, well, people talking about the Catholic Church, I guess. And again, as I said, I'm not here to uh, defend the Catholic Church. I'm just here to give some information and, and sort of shape fill out the contours um, because I think most people don't understand anything about the Catholic Church if you're not Catholic um, as well. Catholics don't understand a lot about Protestants or certainly non-Christian religions. I mean, they tend to be in a bit of a bubble <laughs> overall. Uh, likewise, I teach at this Catholic university and as a Jesuit, and um, there's a lot of freedom here to, to do what I do, to do this. Right. People know. Uh, but the Jesuits have a saying, finding God in all things. And uh, so they give me a wide berth. They give me a lot of uh, flexibility. Anyway, I'm going to take it anyway. But anyway, that's all for now. Bye bye.